one. Hello? Hello! There we are. <laughs> Welcome on in, everybody. Is everybody here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, there we go. <clears throat> I was just making sure everybody, we could hear everybody and everything. Uh, new computer, you know, and it's been a while. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Mist Walkers, in which we are um, not really sure what's going on. We're going to go over everything uh, here in a minute, but first, uh, let's go around. Let's introduce ourselves, uh, reintroduce ourselves again. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, this is a TTRPG show, D and D Fifth Edition. It is uh, my own personal homebrew world that I've been working on for quite a while set in a sort of uh, hopeful yet dystopian future of a uh, D&D fantasy setting. Um, yeah, yeah, that's 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 a general breakdown of it. It's uh, what did she uh, what did Hildy call it? Fantasy punk? Yes, I think. Yeah, I think fantasy punk. Yeah, fantasy right. punk, I think, fits pretty good. Um, that sort of cyberpunky kind of feel, but a little bit different. It's got that fantasy overtones and yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. So, welcome on in, everybody. Thanks you for joining us again. Um, we're going to introduce ourselves. Let's start there. I'm actually going to start right with the person to my left or right. I don't really know. It's, you know, when you're looking at it like this, I'm like, I don't know. One of those two. But we're going to go with Awesome Opossum. Hello, Awesome. Oh, but yeah. My name is Possum. I am a horror streamer here on Twitch, as well as a cosplayer. And I do a lot of spooky fun games. And we do a lot of horror indie games as well. And I play Enna, who is a Draconic Blood sorcerer who is also uh an elf and i'm moving and i packed up my elf ears already and i realized it after i taped the box up so no elf ears tonight but <laughs> um next time they will be back <laughs> so what game are you currently playing on your stream Ooh, i just finished summer of 58 which is a really cool indie horror that got me good really bad on tuesday and i think i'm gonna play a bunch of indie games tomorrow night one of them being called mannequin house which looks awful and i'm very excited for it but i also might cry so it's <laughs> yeah fun times all around <laughs> yeah are you doing any of the like uh phasmophobia style games at all this year or no uh I, my Spooktober got a wrench thrown in it because I have to do a big move soon, but I actually haven't played much Phasmophobia. I think my plan was to do almost entirely indie games. Mm -hmm. um, so the devs who did uh, Summer 58 have a couple others, such as uh, Locked Up and Inside, and I actually got my hands on a copy of PT. So I'll be playing PT this month at some point, which I'm very excited oh, about. Oh, so PT is the... Um... Playable teaser yes silent hill before silent hill got scrapped and it is like the horror game of all horror games despite being a demo but a lot mm -hmm. of games have uh pulled inspiration for lack of a better word from pt it's crazy so, that that got boy, scrapped i know <gasps> kitty kitty cat oh. all right is that uh, the stand-in for robert tonight <laughs> yeah that is gonna be the stand-in for robert <laughs> Gosh, i totally forgot about robert i don't know why <laughs> i was like oh yeah no there is there's two possums there's um, actually multiple possums on this yeah, screen this is Shockingly. a big possum screen yeah craziness <laughs> all the possums there's even possums in chat <laughs> look at that look at them Look at those hype possums. All right. All so right. Uh, going directly to their right, um, we have Victoria. Hello, Victoria. How are you? Hi. Um, I am Victoria. I play um, with the D&D uh, &D Grandma podcast where we play. My husband is the DM for, and we play with my mother-in-law, who is in her 70s and was learning D D, but now we've been playing for years and um it's it's all family it's my sister sister-in-law brother-in-law you know sister from another mister kind of thing and yeah so it's just a big family and we play together and uh we also are on twitter and instagram and we're all over the place but that's pretty much where i'm from so i've been playing D D forever and yeah that's all i do <laughs> not as into um a lot of other games as some people <clears throat> in the same uh, general vicinity that i am in <laughs> i would say that most people mostly only play like one system like one system yeah yeah I'm pretty, yeah i think that's I, the that's the norm yeah i'm pretty jealous of people who can do like multiple systems and stuff like that but i've tried and it breaks my brain so i i leave it 
to other people. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Yeah, hard enough, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did Call of Cthulhu for the first time, and that was a lot for my brain to handle. Uh, the old one or the newer one? The newer one, I think. Okay. I was given a pre-made character sheet so and you, just told to show up. It was really you had to roll. On my end. You had to roll percentiles. Yes. And then see and roll lower than a number, right? Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. It's like golf. You want to get as <laughs> low as humanly possible. Yeah. So some things like some games do take a lot of inspiration from Dungeons and Dragons, which is great. And they simplify it down and they make things a little less crunchy. And I like that about a lot of those really cool narrative games, things like Fate Accelerated and like stuff like that is really, really cool. But yeah, there's a lot of like those old school RPGs. Like if you ever were to do like a like a first or second edition, I guess I think it's second edition Call of Cthulhu and like. Or like Cyberpunk 2077 or like any of those games there. You're just like. It's an encyclopedia of rules that I have to go through. I mean, which chart do I have to reference to understand if I can roll this high or that high? And if I don't need that chart, I have to go and get if that chart isn't the right chart, then I got to go to this chart and look at that chart. And then I have to roll a different set of dice for that. They use a different attribute. And you're just like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is those games. Um, anywho, otherwise, uh, we have Hildy with us normally. Uh, she is going to arrive later. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll do, we'll do a little thing with her when she gets here. But other than that, we have, uh, our GM Cassie. Hello. Hello. Call of Cthulhu is actually a good segue because that's what yeah. the lovely Craftians plays is mm -hmm. Call of Cthulhu. Uh, we definitely homebrewed some of the rules because, uh, the source material is problematic as fuck. But, you know, you do what you can. Mm -hmm. So I am the GM for them. I have contributed a couple of articles for Rowan of Gaming, and mostly I'm just here to have a good time. And I'm playing Ezalaya and uh, her normally possum companion, Robert. Tonight, that's going to be my cat, Yeti, because Robert <laughs> is stuck in a room where I'm doing a bunch of DIY stuff and can't get to him. So we have a stand-in. <laughs> <laughs> the stand-in. Meow. <laughs> The staring. I can see like the eyes shine yeah, every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> but perfectly Perfect. perched, like exactly where your shoulder would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go. Good no, kitty. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, you oh. shouldn't have possum, you shouldn't have said anything. Jeez. Sorry. It's it's okay. At least they heard you. He's not licking his butt. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. We had to gate Bear. my poor dog because he would he would be like pushing me off the chair. Come play with me. So oh. he's not oh. allowed to come and, and sit. Oh, no. He's a My dogs avoid survive. the basement. Usually. Um, for, for both of you, uh, where can we find your podcasts? Pretty much anywhere we can find a podcast? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Just making sure. Favorite podcatchers. Nice. I, I don't know if we're on Spotify because I think sometimes the music is problematic, but I think we're just about everywhere else. Yeah. I'm almost positive you're on Spotify. I want to say that you are, because I'm pretty sure I'm following you guys. Yeah. yeah. So now I have I to know. look. Hang on. We'll see. I have to check. I will I, answer this. Yes. I have to say, I'm pretty lazy about the whole thing. My husband does literally everything <laughs> for it. He does all the writing, all the DMing, all the mm. editing, the, the posting. He does. He runs it soup to nuts. He's amazing. We're on he, here. Oh, he is. this is just an interview with you guys, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you guys actually are. To be honest, but you are on uh, Apple at least. Huh. So. Yeah, I know we're on Apple. Yeah. All right. Well, now we know, and knowing is half the battle. That is, is that how that goes? I think so. I, um, I feel yeah, like I feel like I just said yeah, that wrong. Yeah. 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 Okay. <clears throat> and uh, battle and violence is the other half. <laughs> apparently, yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, hey. Yeah. No, we have the same motto. Knowing is half the battle and violence is the other half. Yeah. Makes sense. <clears throat> uh, anyway, so uh, also I'm Orson. Uh, uh, this is the homebrew world that I created. That was, that's what we're playing in. Um, I have my own Twitch channel in which we're going to be doing some spooky games ourselves. We're actually going to be going to play Tormented Souls, which is a Yee. fixed perspective Resident Evil, long, long dark style game. So exploration and monsters and trying to survive and save people in horror and all that fun stuff. So we're going to start that tomorrow night, which would be a ton of fun. But for now, let's hop into our game tonight. Welcome to Mistwalkers, everybody. Again, 
Uh, I do want to say, you know, thanks for sticking with us f- through a kind of significant hiatus. Uh, a lot of stuff has been going on and um, moving and, you know, all sorts of things. Uh, we're not going to really get into all of it here, but thanks everybody for sticking with us. We really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Uh, my players have specifically requested a recap, not for them, but for all of you. Uh, and we're going to do an abridged recap here uh, to kind of catch us up on what's been going on. Uh, the first episode never happened. No. Nope. Just saying. Never apparently. What are you talking about? There was no first episode. We went, we started at episode two. But if you were to go back and watch the first episode, basically our players came across a uh, rift that had opened up in a brief experimentation or experiment by one Eleanor Luctric trying to uh, experiment with opening portals and things like that. It seems that maybe she inadvertently opened up a portal to somewhere far more sinister. A shadowy type creature started coming out and the players had to beat it back. And in doing so, it left a rift, uh, this sort of like a jagged, almost uh, cut in the, the, the uh, what's the word? Fabric of time. Fabric, fabric of, time. of reality. Thank yeah. you. I was like, fabric's not the right word, but it is. It is. Oops, I dropped my pencil. I got another one. Look at that. Oh. I know, right? That pencil can stay on the floor. That's now the pencil floor. Floor pencil. We'll get it later. My dog will find it and she'll be like, hey, you want this? But anyway, uh, so yeah, they went in. They ended up going in at the behest of Eleanor to go to the other side and see what they could find and maybe close this portal. And in doing so, um, they were accosted by another sort of shadowy entity after traveling through a number of uh, seemingly portals as they traveled through uh, dimensions and possibly even uh, alternate realities before they they came back to the city of Desh and found it uh, in ruins and basically destroyed uh, strange humanoid-like creatures skittering around uh, just out the, out the side of the peripherals, and that is where we ended the first episode. In the second episode, we pick back up because there was no first episode. The players have no recollection of what happened. It seemingly they come back out of the uh, the portal that they had gone in. Uh, Eleanor was happily with them as they uh, were able to perform the ritual on the other side. Close the portal is like uh, nothing else ever happened. Uh, and they started exploring and they started looking into maybe what happened and uh, at the behest of Eleanor yet again. And uh, in doing so, decided to visit the the Library. whisper way the yes whisper way. yes and in doing so they they found like a, the whisper way is a little bit of a black market in a way as enna had a, a bit of an experience with a sort of peculiar 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 library there um run by a uh, a dark a drow um, woman that had uh, seemingly gathered everything here to uh, let everybody uh, look it over. She had a few rules as to uh, just be careful. Don't read out books that ask you to read them. Um, you know, typical library stuff because she didn't want you to die, right? Um, there was definitely evidence that people may have disintegrated here. Um, but in doing so, in taking their time and going through and sort of exploring, um, they did find a number of clues as to uh, maybe where some of these portals came from, some of their backstory, like maybe uh, where various... Um, various, like, shadow entities and things of that nature may have come from, uh, etc., uh, eventually, they did decide to leave the library uh, with all limbs intact, even though there was a brief scare of uh, the possibility of uh, being dragged into some sort of other alternate universe yet again. Uh, and they have been hearing little little tidbits and things that seem really familiar to them, almost like it's coming from them in a way uh, as they've been traveling. Um, they decided that it was uh, very important that they go and they, vis- they investigate the the world tree, go and see what's going on there. 
And in doing so, they traveled into the groves, uh, the massive, like, ancient tree forest. Not massive. It's, it's actually pretty small, but a, a small ancient tree forest, old growth forest that surrounds the world tree and acts as a resting place for the ancestors of those that live in Desh. And they came across a sort of, uh, is it springtime? I think we ended on springtime. Uh-oh. We're gonna we're gonna yeah. say it's springtime. <laughs> we're gonna say it's springtime, sure. um, and it's like the, this sort of flowery, um, and like creature uh, before them. It stands uh, somewhat tall. It has like a large bag on its side, and you can see that it's um, the bag is seems to be full with something. Um, and it's going around and it's tending to the trees. You learned that uh, this is the guardian of the grove here, the guardian of the trees and the souls. It helps things pass on into the afterlife and plants these souls into the ground to feed the trees and allow you to Speak with your family yet again, if you would like. Uh, and that's where we left off. You came across the tree. You see this. It's a tall tree. Uh, like I said, like a ant-like creature. Um, it has like this sort of long spindly wooden like arms that kind of come out from the sides. Um, it has a very humanoid sort of figure. It's standing pretty tall right now. And it has these like uh, fresh looking colorful sort of like pastel flowers sort of going all along its body. Um, it has a, a the visage of a very humanoid like face um, in a sort of fresh uh, new wood, new tree sort of bark over its face. Uh, you do see the remnants of what is likely... Um, I just dropped my other pencil. You do <laughs> see the remnants of what is likely maybe some like like an old sort of like crusty looking um, bark and stuff that uh, is still kind of like attached to the sides and things like that. But as they sort of, there's a moment where they reach into their pouch and they pull out what looks like an orb of light. And they, you can see they brings it up to its mouth and it's little, it's a uh, very tree like face. Uh, the mouth moves and whispers to it. And there's like a little bit of like a, a hum and a reaction within the light in its hand. It's long stick like finger hand. And the, the lights kind of like pulse in there and like light up its face. And then it puts it back in uh, to this large pouch on its side. Uh, and as it does that, uh, part of this like old sort of barky wood, this rotten wood sort of falls down to the ground and almost seemingly, seemingly disintegrates into like compost on the ground. <clears throat> One second. But yeah. And you were, I believe when we left off, you were about to ask this entity a question or two. I don't remember. I, I, wanted, I don't remember exactly. I know that I wanted to go and see the tree to see if it was rotted. Mm -hmm. To see if like the right. roots had any rot on them. Because mm -hmm. that's what we saw. Oh, and I don't remember if that's what we saw. No, that it, we did see that. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, there was yeah. A symbol or something on the tree. There's something too, carved right? into it. Yeah, yeah we were looking hard. for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, do you ask this creature about that, or are you just going to kind of like observe this entity and then move on? Actually, I think who's been living here a long time? Uh, it's up to you. Old? Have you been here a long time? You've been here quite a while, right? I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I would, so, I would say so. I would say I've been here for a while. Out of all so, of this, yeah. Yeah, okay. So you all would know about the Grove Tender. They're somebody that has been here since forever. They they take care of the forest. And like I said, they're like basically a shepherd of souls as well as the shepherd of the forest. Um, people come in here and honor their dead. It is a protector of the dead as well as the the life of the forest and in protecting the the souls of the, your ancestors and families and so on and they use family very loosely here um you can because he's like a shepherd like i said he kind of brings them back and you can ask them questions and talk to your your previous family and ancestors and things of that nature and it just so happens being uh this uh it's uh, uh just turned to being springtime recently uh the connection 
between the the world of the living and the world of the dead is a little bit more thin than it normally is around this time. Yeah, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, would you have to have died in the in Desh to be um, part of that tree and everything like that? Or anywhere in the world? There are souls that are gone forever. However, it is well known that the shepherd goes looking for those wayward souls on the regular and brings many of them back. The cool. only thing that I would really want to do is, um, yeah, if I see him and I see him kind of walking around, um, I will walk up very politely. Mm -hmm. um, Grove Tender, do you have a moment? And the uh, he turns his face towards you. He stands about, we're going to say about seven and a half feet tall, kind of turns towards you and like is obviously looking well down uh, towards you. Yeah, because I'm like four feet. Mm -hmm. um, I think because he's uh, they, they aren't really a entity that's too concerned with being proper or anything like that. He'll they'll get down onto one like knee basically, so they can look you. They like to be kind of close. They don't get too close, but they like to kind of come down and stare into your eyes as you talk to them. Um, Grove Tender, how long have you been here? And they, they say, uh, uh, as long as I can remember, long before Desh was Desh. You remember it as just a forest? Mm hmm That's impressive. It's a very good memory. Um, I'd like to see close up to the roots of the tree. Would that be a problem? Um... Are you trying, let me ask you this, are you trying to hide that you have a concern about the tree? Or are you just like, are you going to be sort of forthcoming? You know what I mean? Like, do yeah. you, if he was to, if this creature, this entity was to like, the gro if the Grove Keeper, we're just going to call him the Grove Keeper. If the Grove Keeper was to sort of scrutinize what you're asking, would they get the sense that maybe you're concerned about something bad happening? It's, I'm not trying to specifically hide it, but okay. if he's like, oh, no, go right ahead, then I might investigate on my own. But if he asks me, I'll say, um, I have an interest in seeing them. Mm -hmm. I have an interest in viewing them closely. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and I think the Grove Tender, you could see there's like a raised eyebrow suddenly, but they say you may go and investigate the tree as always. Thank you. Have you seen anybody near the tree that um, might have been looking suspicious to you? Are you aware of what might look suspicious? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they say, I am aware of what looks suspicious. However, no one suspicious has been near the tree in many, many years. Okay. Well, I appreciate your, your information. Um, I'd like to go and take a look now, and I'm gonna I'm gonna head over mm -hmm. to the the roots where, if I can recall, where I think I saw um, mm -hmm. some, the carving. Yeah, so this is a pretty centralized place. Uh, the the world tree, as we've said, is right in the middle. You've seen what it looks like already, but for those of you that don't know, it's a large sort of uh, pink leafed um, willow tree that sits in the middle of like a little mangrove forest. These, uh, uh, mostly these roots and things of that nature sort of all intertwined below. Um, you can hear the sound of like a uh, water sort of rushing underneath these mangroves. And yeah, yeah. I mean, you see the tree there in all its glory. There are a number of, um, people all around here that are kind of hanging out. Um, many people you can see are, are making maybe like an offering if it's like maybe like a, 
uh, it could be like a moment of contemplation or making an offering of some sort. Uh, you can see many people doing that. Some people are going up to the tree and touching it. Um, so yeah, people are, are pretty, it, it's, it's an open thing. Like you can go here and you can visit it. However you are, you do get a sense that you are constantly sort of being watched as you approach. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess I'm used to that. Um, I'm going to go over to the tree to where we think we saw the carving. Mm-hmm. Do I see anything carved? No. Nope. Nothing. Mm-mm. Okay. Um, when I go and I examine, I'm also going to kind of try to play it off as if I'm just kind of doing like a silent little prayer All right. at the same time. Just like I guess you of... can you can make yeah. a performance or a deception check. Yeah. Whichever is better. Wanna, I do genuinely like as I'm gonna inve- gonna investigate, but then before I leave, I'm mm-hmm. gonna definitely like bow my head and like kind of do like a silent mm-hmm. prayer, just honoring the tree and the life that they provide. Okay, so you do that. Uh, let me know here in just a second what you roll. Um, we've been kind of following Patina yep. here, going through, right? Mm-hmm. What is uh, what is everybody else? Anna, what are you doing while this is sort of going on? Patina seems to kind of have taken like charge. It's like, okay, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to go check on this. I'm going to go, you know, so she's like, she has a very like focused uh, mindset at the moment. Uh, what is Anna doing? Um, I think that, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to like not be suspicious here, but I think Anna is also someone who like doesn't really give suspicious energy all the time to begin with. Like she's kind of not quite there. Um, I kind of want to ask more about, from the grove tender about you know they mentioned there hasn't been a suspicious person in some time Mm -hmm. by the tree and so i kind of want to inquire when the last time was they saw something suspicious so you're asking the grove tender this yeah i'm just yeah out of curious you know out of curiosity how how old is enna she's a relatively young elf so she's I definitely have this memorized on the top of my head. <laughs> I can't remember. I, I think it's like f- 30 something, if I remember right. She's like 130 or something. She's, she's 130. Like, yeah, she's like still a young elf. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you asked the Grove Tender if, uh, you know, who, who was here that was suspicious, and they say, well, long before even you were born, many tried to hurt the tree, take advantage of it, and draw the power from it. It has been some time since something like that has happened. Oh, okay. Take advantage. Mm-hmm. Are they... You take advantage of it, mm. like to sap it of its strength and power, or it is why we are here today. Interesting. Their influence is what caused it to weaken, and the power. Uh, I get, he wouldn't say they wouldn't say power. Uh, it, this influence, this attempts mm-hmm. to uh draw upon its power or what caused it to weaken in the first place and degrade the lines between reality and the planes of other planes of existence. Mm. Yeah. Sorry for a tree. Yeah. And you would all would know the story is is that the world tree is actually basically what quelled uh, an ancient chaos long before sorry the material plane existed. Um it the story goes something or someone planted the seed within the maelstrom the chaos and from it grew the world tree and in doing so the world tree absorbed all the chaos of the planes of existence and brought them into order by spreading its roots out all throughout the material plane Mm -hmm. over time in abuse of its power those roots broke down and uh, until the point of eventually everything just kind of flowed uh back into the material plane and caused the maelstrom the chaos that we know is the mist to happen again okay 
Um, and it's this tree, this centralized tree is what's kind of keeping that back from these like very few bastions of um, reality, basically. Gotcha. Gotcha. So one could like infer that should the tree lose its power, it would kind of be like a chaotic blend. Like you might slip between realities and different planes. Yep. Without control. Yep. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Complete. Completely. Like completely. Um, and, and basically, like an endlessly that's falling. that's basically what has happened here now. Okay. That's why that's why Desh is so yeah. small, mm -hmm. and it's like basically just this like little hub of reality right and yeah. that's why we have like the the portals and things that go through all the different uh planes of existence and out and that's why it's so important to go and explore these areas because you know we don't know what's going to happen to the tree mm -hmm. you know people want to find maybe other places that are being protected yes etc okay in that case i'll probably start walking over to where patina is okay. um is there anyone that based on like just like a general perception like that kind of stands out? Uh go or... ahead and make a perception check. Yeah. Okay. And while you're doing that, hold on to that thought. Azalea. How did you say your name at the beginning of this? I said Azalea, but I think Azalea is what we went with because she was spelling it like phonetically not how it's okay. actually spelled so okay. we're going with azalea okay okay azalea i just wanted to double check because that's what i had in my head but um azalea what, what are you doing so um anna goes up and asks the the grove tender a question um gets an answer goes off and starts looking into the uh the general grove here to kind of maybe get a sense of what's going on you can see that anna in her sort of maybe aloof way is uh walking out into the the open mangrove section of the forest here closer to where the the tree is we have patina asking like obviously like going up to the tree itself and seemingly maybe like praying at it or something where you haven't quite decided how you're doing that yet but what is azalea doing so i think her fallback is to kind of skirt the edges, like the perimeter of everything, and try to mm -hmm. keep as much of a visual on everyone as she can. Okay. Um, that seems to do well for her. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to the outside, make sure everyone's okay. Okay. So if you're going to kind of stick to the perimeter and just kind of keep an eye on it, um, why don't you give, as I'm sure Enna and Azalea would probably communicate at least somewhat, why don't one of you two make the perception roll and do it with advantage? Because you will say that you're kind of helping each other and keeping an eye out. Is that okay? Yeah. Or do you want to do it individually? Yeah, you I'll leave it up ahead. to you two. Um, if you're looking for something specific, because mine is more general, like looking mm -hmm. for immediate threat. So you can go ahead and take that one. Okay. So with advantage? Mm hmm Okay. The first one wasn't good. Oh, there we go. 21. Oh, that's pretty good. And what did you get on your deception or performance check, Patina? I didn't hear that. Uh oh, we're muted. Oh, geez. Um, 16. <laughs> 16 okay um so i'll say right now you're you're you can tell since you've you've kind of been around patina a little bit you can tell the patina is maybe putting on a little bit of a show there and did you do perception or did you do performance performance uh-oh uh-oh hold oh, please the dog found the pencil the dog found the pencil lead poisoning <laughs> is no joke man no it ain't Sorry, everybody. <laughs> the heck is going on? I think we got Hildy is coming in shortly. Okay. Uh -oh. yeah. So let's just uh, let's finish this part up real quick. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry about that. I didn't realize my phone was uh, the volume was on. Oh, I didn't hear anything. Yeah, I didn't hear it either. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> we thought the dog got the pencil. Yeah. No. No. Okay, good. Well, you know, decent microphone setup, I guess. Anyway, um <laughs> she rolled a performance. 16. 
performance on their 16. Yeah, yep. so you can tell that you can kind of tell, but it doesn't seem like anybody else is really obviously aware of what she's doing. But uh, Patina is very focused and seems to be kind of investigating the uh, the tree here. And I want you to roll an investigation roll as well, since you're kind of like, I want to see if I can see anything else here. Um, you realize the character that I built is not how I'm playing it. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, did You're we okay. realize we all have a zero in intelligent roles? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like none of us have intelligence. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm so smart. Bro. I'm like, <laughs> we're just very know. charismatic. <laughs> What'd you get? 18. 18? I'm waste a perfectly good roll, I feel. 18. What'd you get? 18? 18. Okay. Um, so on both of these, like, you, we're going to get to you in the tree here in a second, but you, uh, Anna, as you're sort of scrolling, like you're you're maybe keeping an eye on things, and with as, uh, Azalea sort of like maybe looking over your shoulder, you kind of both point off to the side, and you can see that there are um, a number of sort of ghostly figures that have seemingly sort of just like out of out of, just out out of your view, kind of off to the side in the. Pretty much throughout the whole like area here, there's five different ghostly figures surrounding the tree. Do they look similar to those like beings that we saw when we were in like the dead version of the world? They do not. No. Okay. okay. Um, they're all fairly nondescript. They have hoods up and they're wearing robes. Um, they are very, that sort of very stereotypical, ethereal sort of look to them, this sort of almost like blue etherealness, and maybe just like a slightly brighter section where their eyes would be. Okay. Um, it's a little, un, it's really hard to kind of see what they are. However, you also notice with your role, no one else seems to notice them. Oh. They're fairly obvious to you. And Azalea. However, for everybody else, they don't oh, even seem to notice park. them. They're not the park picking is up on lovely it. Lovely here. Yep. Do they um, look like they're doing anything, or are they just? Mm, they're there? sort of listfully moving around. Okay. They're not really like. They're not. They don't seem to really be doing anything. They seem to just—they seem to just be kind of wandering. Um, and Patina, no surprise here, I guess. But you don't see anything odd about the tree. You don't see no signs of any markings or carvings or anything like that. Mm. And on that note, why don't we take a real quick break? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna hop in, and we're gonna grab uh, our our missing member fourth fourth player, and uh, we're gonna grab them. We'll be back in just a little bit. Ooh. See you in a couple, everybody. Where's my break?
downhill from here. <laughs> oh, it's all downhill from here. <laughs> uh just celebrating our our wins everybody you know all right so uh i'm gonna be doing this a little little uh haphazardly everybody but um so bear with us while we set this up uh our our good friend hildy is back which is very exciting yay yay listen you're gonna catch you up to catch you up while he's doing that i rolled two dies so far and they were both over 15 I mean, not to brag or anything. <laughs> I'm, I, I can't live up but to that expectation. Were. That's <laughs> they were over fifteen. That both of that them. expectation. Listen, I don't. I mean, don't That's feel a the high pressure. bar to clear. That's a high bar to clear. <laughs> <laughs> it's so high. Yeah, and both of them are my zero modifiers. Why am I playing a character that wants to investigate with zero intelligence? I feel like I'm just like a bumbling fool running around going, hmm, I wonder why the sky is blue. Oh, I don't know. I walk away. Like, <laughs> just a team full of kids. Uh, that That's literally what we are. Yeah. <laughs> team full of himbos. That's great. Bunch of himbos solving crime. It's like we're all Fred in the mystery machine. <laughs> oh, no. Oops, all Fred. Yeah. Oops, all Fred. Oops, all Fred. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's great. That is the new name of the show. <laughs> uh gosh when we were playing uh phasmophobia i was deemed the fred oh no. yeah because i would just run in and just be like all right well i'm just gonna go yell its name hopefully y'all can <laughs> can uh get the points and stuff that we need oh get a good God. picture of my corpse yeah yep. get a good picture of my corpse <laughs> it's good stuff all right hey look at that oh wait i gotta do myself hold on which one's me? We almost Which button? had it. We're so close. Which button is me? One of these. There we go. You I was like, no, I look weird. I'm a fidgeter. Fidgeter. I'm a fidgeter. Come here, Morrison. Get your, get your weird old face down there. Cool. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Welcome back, everybody. We're back into Mistwalkers. We had a little, little, little fun chat there. You know, some behind the scenes stuff going on. I really need to figure out the studio settings, the studio mode. Yeah, once we get um, on to the new system of the videos and whatnot, I think we'll be good. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, last we left, well, when we went on our very short break, um, we had just discovered, what did we just discover? Oh, these um, ethereal ghostly entities that seem to be only noticeable by our group here. Okay. Um, and even now as... Patina, gosh, wow, I got too many names up in here. As I was like, Vic, or yeah. yeah, Patina, it, Patina, even as you kind of maybe take a step back from the tree, you're like, uh, there's a ghost. It's kind of like maybe about 30 feet away from you, sort of on the opposite side of the tree. Uh, very clearly sort of next to somebody, like there's an actual person over there that seems to be praying. Um, and they have, they seem to have no idea. So it's kind of an odd question because I'm not sure of my experience with this, but would I go, oh, here we go again? Or would it just be like, oh, it's that season, you know, like, I'm not sure of my experience with coming to the tree. Um, hmm. Personally, I feel like Patina would not be interested in contacting spirits. So and she typically, has her own God, but I'm curious. Why did you guys just switch? Yeah, that's weird. That is weird. Hold on, <laughs> hold on, everybody. We're doing it live. What did you do? If that makes me smarter, I don't want to move. It doesn't. Yeah, every, everybody's oh. size is <laughs> like we're all zero level int people. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we're all like not a joke. Yeah. <laughs> we have a solid ten, guys. Leave me alone now. <laughs> but we are very charismatic and pull off the ascot very well, yeah. so it's fine. So well, dude, ascots are hot. They're they're back in. I think I don't know. Yeah, I actually don't know. Nah, that's that's Elon Musk's fault. Ugh. Oh my god! Damn it, Elon. <sighs> no, we're not giving it to him. We're not letting him have no. credit for it. No, that's yeah, fair. Taking it back. <laughs> fair. Sure. I, I didn't I didn't mean what I said, everybody. <laughs> so um Patina. Yes. Um 
this is nothing like what you would normally get when the veil between life and death is thin here. Mm. It's usually centered okay. around the individual trees, uh, the family members that are there, and it's more of a they guide you and occasionally speak to you. Um, it's not really like you see the visage of your, your ancestors. You just hear their advice. I think my first thing then is, um, I am going to try to not disturb the floating figure, Mm -hmm. but I am going to whisper politely to the person praying near it and say, um, excuse me, Mm -hmm. I recommend backing up a little bit. Did I get their attention? Yeah, they kind of like open up one eye and turn and look towards you, still in their like. I'm gonna mouth back up a little bit and kind of point to the little guy, like chill, but back up a little. Just... Yeah, they kind of like look idea. up and they look up and they they just kind of like look at you confused, and they they kind of stand up and move back about three feet and then kneel back down. Is there anything on the ground like pine cones or acorns or little rocks or there'd be like anything? sticks and things like that around? Sure. Can I pick one up? Yeah. Can I toss oh, it at wow. one? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and make a an attack roll. Use your dexterity. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> what is everybody else doing? Go ahead. What'd you get? Eight. Okay. We'll get to that in a second. Oh no, Lord! What's uh, what's Hildy doing? Am I have I arrived? Am I part of? The yeah, team? yeah, you're here. You've been here. You're kind of wandering around with everybody else. So you can yeah. decide: did you kind of like follow Patina? Did you hang out with them, or did you go to? Did you hang out with Anna, or did you maybe hang in the back with Azalea? Did you go off and do your own things? So you're kind of like on your own, but still within eyesight of everybody. What what did you do? I'll hang out in the back. Okay. And, yeah. So you're kind of keeping get, an eye on things. Not get too close to anything too spooky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's very obvious to you that these things are there. There's mm-hmm. five of them, kind of floating around. I want to clarify. I underhand threw it. Yeah. So I you didn't underhand threw it. it. I just... <laughs> yeah. So you're not like, yeah, like as hard yeah, as you could. I underhand. I'm yeah. softball pitching yeah. this thing. <laughs> yeah. You didn't go for like the full 90 mile an hour fastball. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's fine. I kind of assumed. I didn't think you were like trying to attack them. Um, no. <laughs> Azalea, what are you doing? You see Anna chuck, like underhand chuck a, a, a stick towards one. Uh, I'm definitely going to be boosting Robert into his little shoulder holster. Mm-hmm. So just in case something happens. And then mm-hmm. I'm not going to pull any of my weapons out, but I am going to have... It's like the hovering above your guns sort of thing where you just like, I'm going to grab it if I need to, but I'm not going to touch anything yet, but I'm ready. You're like, maybe. Oh, yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I mean, you chuck it. It kind of lands somewhere near them, but it definitely doesn't go into the figure. Okay. And it very obviously kind of like looks down at the stick and then looks back up at you, Anna. Is like looking at you, and you could see a very, very clear sort of head tilt, like a. <laughs> okay, so I'm not crazy. Those are there. All right. Hmm. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna point, like, try to like gain the attention. Of everyone. Should we? Should we talk to the? Should we? Should we? Leave yeah. So them? you're you're kind of like everybody. Mm, should we talk? And as you're doing that, all five of them start to sort of converge towards you, Anna. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm gonna just um, back her up slowly. Mm-hmm. Just nice, nice and gentle. Can so, I tell if they're, are they speaking to each other or are they co- totally quiet? Totally quiet. Oh, fuck. And you start to back up. Um, I'm obviously apprehensive of what's happening here, mm-hmm. right? And all of them stop as soon as you start to, as soon as you start to like back up mm-hmm. and, you know, you kind of like step back like, oh shit, right? Um, yeah, they all stop. They stop right where they are. I take a step forward. <laughs> they just stay. Okay. Yeah. They seem to be reacting. Okay. 
the grove tender what is his reaction not at all Z literally zero reaction well that makes me feel a little bit better i'm gonna give them a little wave uh the one that is closest to you the one that you threw the stick at mm -hmm. um and kind of bows a little bit oh interesting yeah you get a little like sort of like quarter bow I'll do a in recognition. Back. Mm -hmm. Hi, puppy. Oh. Not, a, okay. not a full 45 degree. Mm -mm. Like mm -hmm. a little. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they, they kind of like all of them sort of do the same thing. Um, yeah. Uh, let me see. What would they do here? I want to walk over to them very slowly mm -hmm. and say, Would you like to tell us something? We're here to listen. The one that you walk over to kind of pulls their head, their um, hood back. Uh, and you can see very clearly now, it went from a very uh, ethereal sort of visage, this like see-through entity. And um, it has taken on a, a still uh, ghostly sort of form. However, at this point, it has its shape and its figure and everything has sort of uh, come together much more clear. Um, in doing so as well, like uh, Patina, you feel like a slight... Gosh, how would it feel? Like, I know you don't really have a stomach, but there's like almost like a slight, like, like you went over a hill too fast in your car and your stomach kind of sinks a little bit for a moment. Um, Everybody else, like the hair kind of sticks up on your on your hands and your arms and you, you get a little bit of a shiver kind of go through your bodies as this sort of happens. And they all start to like pull their hoods back. Um, the one that's closest to you, Patina, kind of looks at you and it, it it's, they have um, a very fine featured face, long sort of pointed elven ears um, and a uh, shaved head. There's no hair on their head at all. Uh, this this entity, that this uh, ghost that's before you um, has a, a sort of, uh, a very nondescript, almost and androgynous, though fine-faced, fine-figured face. And uh, they look at you and they, a sort of wispy, ethereal way, um, they say to you, it's... You can see us as a, as a question. Yes, I can see you. Where are you from? And uh, this one that's in front of you kind of looks to the others. Um, they all have somewhat similar features, uh, somewhat androgynous looking. Uh, however, some of them are a little bit more broad or um, there's uh, one that has more of a, like actually has like a beard uh, that's kind of comes down like quite a, quite far. And they all look a little bit different, um, but obviously similar. And the one with the beard is kind of like nearest to you, Anna, and it kind of looks at you and it says almost like sort of ignore, ignoring that you're there in a way. And it says, um, uh, apparently all of them can. And you can see him. He's kind of like reaching out to you, like almost like he's going to poke you, Anna, for a moment. Oh. Like this is like this sort of ghostly ethereal finger kind of comes towards you and kind of like pokes at you a little bit. Do I feel the poking? <laughs> Sorry. Oh my gosh. What's wrong with me? Hold on one second. <clears throat> it's that time of year. Yep. It is that time of year. Seasonal Hello, nonsense. Always the seasonal nonsense. But yeah, so um, you do feel it, actually. Uh -oh. uh, although it doesn't feel like a finger. It feels like something that shouldn't be there is there for a moment. Ooh. Like it feels wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that's fun. Mm -hmm. I, so my... he doesn't respond when I ask him where they're from, right? No, they seem to kind of like ignore that for a moment and are, are kind of conversing about the peculiarity of all of you being able to see them. What is your name? Um, we... One of them says, we have been known by many names. 
However, you would likely know us as the Tribunal. Tribunal? Mm hmm Would we know them as the Tribunal? You would. Okay. Um, you don't know, you've never met the tribunal before, but you've heard that the tribunal is basically a singular entity, um, a godlike entity that, uh, protected the tree a oh. long time ago and acted as an arbitrator between mortals and gods, <clears throat> having the power to banish gods to other realms. When's the last time the tribunal was, um either alive or in contact or been seen in this part. It's always assumed that they are still here, but nobody sees them. Mm. So nobody of record has seen them. Correct. At least come out and said that they've seen them. Okay. So it's quite odd that we would be able to see them at all. Yeah, they agree. <laughs> They seem, um, you know, they're almost very quizzical about you. They don't seem to be threatened by you in any way. Um, and they don't really, as far as you can tell, um, at least on the surface, seem to be threatening you in any way. They seem sort of just like curious. They're like, hmm, I wonder why this is, you know? Okay. okay. In a way that it's like almost like it shouldn't be possible. <laughs> If anyone has anything else to say, please interrupt me. But at this point, I'd also like to say it is an honor to see you. Um, do you have any idea why we're able to see you now? You can see they all kind of like turn and look at each other. And they say, oh, you know, each one, the, the, they kind of take turns speaking. Um, and they occasionally have individual sort of thoughts where it's like it seems like they all can have their own individual moments, but there's moments where you can see that they all kind of come together as like one singular entity and speak, right? And one of them looks towards you, uh, Hildy, or not Hildy, I'm sorry, Bettina, and says, there have been others that could see us. It has been a long time, though. Usually... The only ones that can see us have come into contact with the others of our kind. The others of your kind? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Five of us now, however, at one point, there were seven. Oh. Interesting. What happened to the other two? The youngest became a wanderer, a god in the eyes of mortals, gathering the riches of civilizations long lost. The other became a pestilence on the world around it, a destroyer of those learning or wishing to do good, a corrupter, if you will. Well, every family has one. You may know him as the Kingmaker. DM, please remind me, we, do we remember seeing that creature? No. Okay. So even with their thing, like, even with them saying this, does this jog any memories for us? Like, oh, wait a minute, hold on. Uh, you know what? How about this? Make a, ooh, we'll do a wisdom saving throw. Hold on, hold on. Okay, I need my good one. I need my good die, and I need to clean it. Get the good dice. She's my lucky girl, so hold on a second. <laughs> no. All right. Roll the six plus five. So 11. So 11. Yeah, unfortunately, you, 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 you have a moment where you're like, 
oh gosh, something feels off here. Something I, I, I want to, like, you're trying to remember something that just seems just out of grasp. And I want you to take three points of psychic damage. Oh, dang. know how to do that okay hold on oh damage this is yeah. my first damage guys oh yay <laughs> i'm not that excited <laughs> there was something there hildy or um oh my gosh why do i keep doing that there was something there patina you don't know what the like you it's just it's just out of like frame right <laughs> It's almost like there's something in your peripherals that you're trying to draw upon. And it's as you sort of try to grasp onto it, um, everybody can actually see like Hildy has a little, or oh my gosh, did it again. It sees that Patina has like a little bit of like, I, I guess you don't have blood. Like, oil? Grease? <clears throat> An oil leak. Yeah. Oil if Patina had blood instead, there's like a little bit of this like sort of uh, viscous what? sort of fluid coming from like her mouth. Just off mouth? to the side, yeah. Oh. I'm gonna... Excuse me. Mm. At this point, I'm um, going to try to shake my head, and I want to see... Can, as I look around, can anybody else see them? Is anyone else taking notice of these people? No. There's actually some people looking at you all. Like, you're really weird. Great. Because <laughs> you're, you're kind of talking, and you seem to be talking to things. That don't exist. I'm used to people staring at me. I don't care. And I turn around. Um, I'm going to say to them, I'm going to ask about this, this Kingmaker, because clearly we don't, I'm going to be like, we don't really know what you're, what you're talking about. Like, mm -hmm. Kingmaker? This is, I've literally never heard this word before. Right. So you ask them about the Kingmaker, and they say, um, knowing the Kingmaker is not for mortals such as yourselves. Hmm. It only invites him in to corrupt you. Oh. As even he was capable of corrupting the gods themselves. And they say, even a long many ages ago, before the collapse, there were many more gods in the world around you. Oh. <clears throat> it is his influence that destroyed many of them. <laughs> Sounds more like a king killer than a king maker, then. Was he one of the ones who hurt the tree in the beginning to steal its power? He did. And we banished him for it. Where was he banished? To the... They wouldn't call it a plane. They say, to the world, to the... To the existence between all other existences. And if there was a rift in that, would he be able to get out? It is possible. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'm gonna go smack that little gnome across the head. Mm -hmm. Um. Though we have not sensed his presence in many, many years. So then is your role to to guard the tree from this happening? That's what we uh, that's their deal, right? Like they mm -hmm. they're protectors. Yeah. Okay. And they say yes, yes, we protect it from the outside influences. We okay. battle the the things that you cannot see. Hmm. As the tree weakens, so do we. Is the tree weakening? It once kept all the chaos, the maelstrom, the mist contained, it can no, no longer do that. Hmm. 
can we support or reinforce the power of the tree? Is there anything that we can, for instance, feed it to, to strengthen it? Um, they say we have given those, um, explorers, the pathfinders, if you will, um, the seeds of the tree, as more are planted on the stable realities that you come across as you explore the, the mist, the tree will garner a stronger foothold. In the chaos. Hmm. It will also gather the attention of those that wish to destroy it. Oh, okay. It's a catch-22 situation. I'm thinking to myself, we should tell them about what happened the other day. That's what you're thinking to yourself? Yeah. Yes, you should tell us, though we know already. It is interesting and likely why you can see us. So you know already that there was a, a, a crack over by the school? We know because of your thoughts. So, looking through my eyes, do you see the Kingmaker? I do not. Though, I do believe there is something else there, hidden from you and us alike. Hmm. So, what do, you, what do you recommend that we do? Should we try to continue to other planes and plant seeds of trees like how, what can we do to help because clearly something's up the pathfinders explore you seem to have a different path in front of you they say eleanor wants you to look further into the location the source of the shadow creatures that came from her portal we believe when time, should you explore this further, you'll come to know more about what your destiny is. So maybe we need to go back to Eleanor and see if she's learned anything new and what our next step should be. Hmm. Would you be opposed to us coming back to ask more questions at a later time? No. We have nothing but time. Well, that's good. Yeah, we got some friends. You will find that you have many friends here in Desh and out there. Folks that have made a foothold for themselves amongst the, the mist in the maelstrom. Ancient entities, godlike creatures, and so on, that all would be willing to help you. Should you search for them? Is there a way to tell friend from foe? You guys have like a safe word or something, or any recommendation? Uh, unfortunately, no. Not even a secret handshake. Nothing. <laughs> and they they do actually all kind of laugh. They think that's funny. Um, and they all kind of like laugh in unison. Unison, it's a little creepy, <laughs> like all at once. Um, and it kind of has like this little cacophony. You can see everybody else kind of like responds to that. Like, mm. was that <laughs> you know? And they say, unfortunately, no. There is no way for us to pass on whether something is friend or foe. You Many will try to deceive you. You said the youngest of you was a wanderer. Mm -hmm. Do you know the location or? No, they keep themselves well hidden. Though you may know of them as the broker. The broker? broker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, everybody can make a religion check about the broker if you want. If you okay. religion check. Uh, Natural twenty. Nice. Yay. Plus four. Nice. Dang, I don't natural. Know why I'm trying. Natural twenty minus one. Oh, nice. Yay. What everybody else uh, get? Natural seven. That's it. <laughs> nice. 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 Well, the natural twenty and the natural nineteen. It's a dirty nineteen, technically. Yeah, dirty nineteen. <laughs> uh, would know that the the broker is a considered a, a god, um, and they are often worshipped by uh, merchants and adventurers and other things, uh, archaeologists and things of that nature, because they are very well known as someone that uh, would explore the ancient world and find uh, all sorts of crazy artifacts and things like that. Um, they actually have a set of vestiges, things that they carry on themselves that are so well known and have been um, made into various magical items that sort of replicate their uh, their powers. So there's a and magical items that sort of replicate on a much minor level these ancient relics powers that uh, the broker has found. Gotcha. Uh, with your 25 and 24, Anna, you know of these items. Um, you would know that they have a uh, a cloak that makes them undetectable by anything. Uh, no scrying, no magical gods. Anything can find them when they don't want to be found. They have a torch um, that burns black. It is called the Black Flame Torch, uh, coincidentally. And it can light anything. Okay. Anything that is un that is not flammable becomes flammable. It also gets rid of all magical darkness. Oh. They wear a set of boots. Um, these boots were made allow... For <laughs> they were made for walking very literally. Um, they literally... You do not ever have to rest as long as you keep moving in these boots. Yo. However, Can I get a set of those. <laughs> however, <laughs> the rumor is should the broker ever stop, he will instantly die because all your experiences to the time, all the rest that you have skipped, instantly catch up with you. Oh. Uh, hmm. So he's literally moving constantly. Apparently. So if we want to talk to him, it'd be like talking to Forrest Gump when he's running. Uh, apparently. <laughs> You'll see. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, what, what, right. uh, oh, and he has a, a uh, magical book and quill that never runs out of paper that writes down literally everything that he's doing at all times and the things that surround him. So it's like a constant record constant record looks like we're someone's a velma in this group after all <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so yeah yeah so he has a never-ending record of everything that he has ever done that surrounds him that he can reference at any time basically so It'd be embarrassing mine would just be how many times i've eaten <laughs> I'll cool thing about it too, to like the group, so that y'all are like in on the know. Yep. And, and the cool the thing know. about that book too is it writes down things that you don't even know were there. Oh, nice. Yeah. Creepy. That'd be super yeah. creepy. You get you know, yeah. you're like reading the book, and it's like you know, there's a guy standing right behind you, right? And you're like, what? Yep. I'm just thinking more like, hey, book, could you take the night off? Could you could you give me just like a like an hour personal? There's time? some no. All right. I have to go to the bathroom. I'd rather you not yeah, record no, this. You could, yeah, no. If you got something I could read instead, that would be great. But I don't yep. really need you right this minute. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And there's other rumors about various things that they have discovered and so on. But nothing is... This is like the main vestige of the, the broker. Vestiges of the broker, if you will. Gotcha. So. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's the broker, um, and he is worshipped by you know as a god, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And we know that a lot of the gods, as you all know, uh, as players, we kind of talked about this. uh, A lot of the gods and things are more abstract now, um, are very much less defined and are often god like entities are often not really worshipped at times or very few people do. So. Yeah. Continuing on. Um, yeah, they mentioned the broker and they say, you know, um, though our brother at times may be difficult to deal with, they would mean you no harm should you come across them. Okay, so they're not like benevolent. Aloof. Oh, or, yeah, okay. Is a good way to describe nice. their godliness. That's a good word. Aloof. <laughs> yeah. So, should you need anything, advice, anything that we could help you with, um, you may come and visit us at any time. Though I will say, as the veil between the realms of life and death um, become more s- substantial, it may be harder for us to pass on our knowledge. Because you think you'll be trapped on the other side? Mm, More of the way we believe that you are perceiving us. Um, Since you're all sort of scrutinizing what's going on, everybody make an insight roll to that. Oh, good point. Taking it all at face value that they're not evil. (laughs) Uh, I got a four. Okay. Jeez Louise. I got an 18. Ooh, oh, nice. 18. 12. Yeah. Okay, well, the, the 18 and the 17, there's something they're not telling you with that statement. They're they're kind of hiding, they're kind of keeping something from you. Um, but there's something about the your link between life and death and being able to sort of see them and talk to them, there's some sort of link there between you and that. Mm. You just don't know what yet. I sort of sidle up to whichever one looks like it is the most dwarf-like in shape. Sure, there's one with like a big beard. Yeah, he's like... I was was hoping the big beard was also the stocky guy, and I kind of sidle up next to them a little bit. Mm Mm-hmm. I just sort of look over and end. Well, then I guess we'd better get going and back before we lose you too too far. Or before anything else happens then, huh? They nod. They simply nod. Good talking to you. <laughs> and they say, we wish you the best of luck and hope that you discover your path. Likewise. Yeah, they go back to kind of like floating around and just kind of chilling around the tree and just like they kind of like go over to people and you can see that they're just kind of like existing. They're not really bothering anything. They're not they don't seem to really be doing anything. Um, However, as you're leaving and we're going to kind of see you all sort of leaving this scene, we can kind of turn and we're going to like have that sort of moment where. We see them, uh, a person sort of grieving uh, near one of the trees, like kind of just on the outside of the area. And one of these, uh, one of the tribunal members goes up and you can see this person sort of has just like a, um, you know, they're, they're very upset. They have, they're kind of crying over the, like uh, the, this section of the tree here. Um, and you get a sense that maybe, maybe recently they've had a loved one pass and one of the tribunal members kind of comes over and uh, places their hand on their shoulder. Right. And this person's sort of like sobbing figure, uh, you know, you, we can see suddenly a, smile kind of come across their face for a moment and they sort of start like wipe away some of their tears a little bit and then stand up and kind of dust themselves off uh seemingly um relieved by something interesting 
And yeah, where does the group want to go now? Before I go anywhere, I want to turn around to my, my three buddies mm -hmm. and I want to say, okay, so if we can see them, we've seen one of the other ones before. Because I definitely have never seen these guys. So we either saw Mr. Pestilence Kingmaker or we saw Wandery Person. The but the Wandery Person, I think we would have <laughs> remembered. Well, didn't right. they just say that they're that he's got a, a a means to make himself unseeable? Yeah, he's got an undetectable cloak, so it's possible we didn't see the broker at all. But they well, saw now that we've come in contact with him, but we haven't seen him. Mm -hmm. But if we haven't seen him, then we haven't seen him. I don't know. This is over my head. <laughs> Should we relay this all back to uh to Eleanor, perhaps? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, that's a good idea. They're about the only ones who know what's going on, so probably. Okay. So is I'm that where we're heading? Surprised. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say I'm very surprised that the way he described the guy with pestilence, the kingmaker, I'm very surprised that the person who came through the portal wasn't him. Like Maybe it was a different creature, but that's bizarre. But uh, I do agree we should go, and I definitely need to rest. I am very tired. I feel like it's been a very long day. Cool. All right, so you're going back to Eleanor. Yes. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna kind of we're gonna fast forward here a little bit, and I think you're gonna tell her everything, the tribunal, all of that. No, but you say it in a way that makes me think maybe no. <laughs> no, there's a, I'm not, I don't, don't read too much into that. <laughs> just saying. Like, this is. prepare to fast forward, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's all. Montage. We told her everything. <laughs> yeah. So I think the next scene is, uh, you're all sitting around this, like, kind of round table. There's a small, like, uh, feast sort of in front of you, some food. And, you know, we see, like, a bottle yeah. of wine that's, like, been drank. And uh, we what we did get everybody we... else eat? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so three bottles of wine that have been drank, and like a little extra food, a couple plates. Um, <clears throat> and we see kind of everybody sitting around this round sort of wooden table, some crumbs and things on the ground. Um, a satiated uh, Hildy dwarf uh, off to the side, and others. Um, my character trait, it's hungry. <laughs> we have Robert. Robert the Possum? Yeah. I, I have Roger stuck in my head for some reason. Anyway, we have Robert the Possum there, and he's kind of like nibbling on some like bread and like figs and stuff that were on the table. And uh, Hildy kind of like sets down a, a glass um, that is uh, that she just uh, very obviously finished like chugging. And she's kind of like looking at you all. And we get the sense that you just kind of laid everything on her as you all sort of stare at her expectantly for a moment. And she says, yeah, 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 yeah. That's 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 a lot. Some, and up until this point, she's been pretty much silent. She's just kind of been taking in what you've been saying. Okay, well, good to know. I maybe I don't know caused a rift between the planes of existence and maybe let out this kingmaker. Um, that's that's wonderful. Good to know. See, she's kind of dealing with that internally. <laughs> well, you know, maybe I should have been more careful. We just put Eleanor to therapy. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. She says, well, <clears throat> no time but the future, right? So what do we do now? And uh, she kind of she comes out and she unravels this. Um, it, it's a leather bound, like almost like a scroll case. She kind of unravels and inside she's got all these like maps and things like that all sort of like bound to one side and she's kind of like flipping through them. She kind of opens up one and she lays it out in front of you and on this map here, the very crude sort of looking thing, um, it's obviously very ancient. It has like almost like a waxiness to the outside and like crinkles and stuff that go through it. She's obviously found it somewhere or bought it from somebody and somehow she has come across this map and she points here and she says... Um, the various research that I've done uh, since you've all been 
um, talking with gods and such. She kind of like, you know, puts her glasses back up and gives herself like a little side head shake. Um, <laughs> and you can see her kind of like chuckle to herself a little bit. It's like just kind of taking in the almost absurdity of the everything, you know, in a way like this just sort of like very massive thing that's sort of been laid into all of your laps. And uh, she says, from what I can gather, we may have a clue as to the source of the entities that have tried to come through my portal. I believe it came from here. And she kind of points down at this map. And it's a on the map itself. It's fairly nondescript, but it's uh, it has like a depiction of like maybe like a jungle or something similar and a mountain. And then this like uh, very obvious like X marks the spot temple on the map itself. And there's another area that she's sort of drawn on with like a Rax red circle. And she says, I believe since this has already been discovered by the Pathfinders, that this is the location, or at least connected somehow to the portal that I opened. It is where I had gotten some of the texts, the runes, if you will. <clears throat> One previous expedition had gone here. Um explored a bit and found some ancient text and so on and that's where i got some of my information in my research you want to head out and just just go i really like to rest for a little while <laughs> you've all taken a short rest just so you know okay. Um, um I don't, uh, Victoria speaking here, I'm out of spell slots. I really need to rest. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, uh, she kind of senses this this moment where you're both like kind of like, well, do you want to leave like right now? Jeez, you know. And as uh, uh Azalea, oh my gosh, that's not her name at all. Eleanor. Eleanor is like, no, no, no. I I think rest today. You won't be able to leave until tomorrow anyway she says i've uh, scheduled with the operators uh a time for you to leave tomorrow a direct link to here if you would like perfect yeah let's do that all right are you all in agreement that we should all go together i mean does anybody have any plans tomorrow doctor's appointments or you know I, I think this might take a bit of priority yeah so anybody have to go to the dmv <laughs> i had a book club thing but like that can be rescheduled that can wait oh, yeah, no, you, can always, you can always push that off no I, I i've got a feeling that if we wait too long you know every everything will just come to us here if we don't hurry and go to it so, yes. uh, i mean that would save it. us the trip but Not, well but well yeah that's true yeah but a lot can, of people we can arrive though. Yeah, arrive on our terms, you know, be be prepared and everything, and not you know not get caught with our pants on fire again. <laughs> uh, still, so, so, still salty about that. Yeah, that's fine. We'll rest. Okay. Okay. I am going to um take out my journal, and mm -hmm. I'm going to jot down some notes of the day. Um. And I'm hoping that maybe as I'm like jotting stuff down, like as I'm writing, maybe I hopefully remember something. I don't know. But end game is I definitely want to do. Um, I'm guessing that I have a house or I live nearby or something. I want to go to wherever I hold up. You and you live within the university, the, okay. the circle of learning. Um, okay. There is like you and Enna both live here, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um, you are actually, you have a, a room, uh, that's near-ish to Eleanor. Okay. Like, I'm Eleanor has, that. like, uh, Eleanor has, like, a room and, like, a, a library of her own within the, the university. Uh, you have a room nearby that would probably be, 
you know, it's a room, you know, we can actually talk about it if you want. Like if you want to like kind of expand on what's there and so on. Um, but it could be, you know, like one or two rooms, like smaller rooms or something along those lines, whatever you think. Uh, I imagine Gil- that I Dina don't have a lot because I don't sleep. I don't eat. I don't mm. drink. I don't do anything. Mm. I feel as though I would have some sort of comfy chair and Mm -hmm. a lot of journals that I've been keeping over the years. Yeah. And that's about it. Like very simple, like nothing really in there. And the same thing would go with you, Anna. But Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to kind of expand on your room and what's in there, but you have a room, you are allowed to kind of do what you want with. Yeah. I think my room is probably, She's probably got books and stuff in there. I think she like I've got a bunch of like little trinkets and things. Mm -hmm. I would think that there's like lots of like rugs or things on the floor and like a little fireplace. Okay. Um, But as an elf, I don't actually need to sleep. So I would say I just have like a lot of sitting area. But it feels like. um, Like a not like a hobbit hole, but like a hobbit hole for an elf. A more elegant hobbit hole. More elegant hobbit hole. (laughs) Yeah, no, that works. So, yeah, I mean, if you... So, you have a couple options. Obviously, um, Eleanor would be more than willing to put you all up somewhere. Anybody that isn't staying here, you could go back to your homes, the places that you stay normally, and then meet up in the morning. You can all stay together. Uh, That's up to you. But I think regardless right now, the night, the rest of the night will go uneventfully. So if you want to expand on what you do for the night, that's fine. But as of right now, nothing, nothing happens. It's, it's a quiet, serene, peaceful night. The only thing I want to do is write and then anyone's welcome to come back to my room. Although I don't have a bed, but I have one chair. It's not that comfortable to to people with flesh but you're welcome (laughs) to it or at least one of you are it's kind of small hildy might break it okay don't come back to my place i'll see you in the morning and i can walk off can i oh i i'm going to go to a place that has a bed i think okay if that's all right by you and, and uh let others know that i'm going to be departing so that no one's missing me when i don't show up for dinner so yeah, uh, Hildy would like to go back to um, wh- whom or wherever she normally resides. Do you stay within the the Firebelly Guild Hall? Um, I'd like to. Yeah, I mean they have rooms. They probably have a room for you. So oh, then yeah, yeah. I'll go cool. back to the Guild Hall and and let some people know you know where I'm off to. So that yeah, yeah, they don't care. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, oh, okay, yeah, have fun, have fun. Goodbye, Hildy. Be right. good on your adventure. Don't touch my stuff. I'll no. give it back for it. Well, I, we me. won't sell it until... Oh, we'll give it at least three weeks. Three weeks, that's fair. Three weeks is fair. I'd give you four, but we can talk about that when I get back. <laughs> yeah, okay, so you have, you have a have night. Do you have sleep? Do I... Uh... Probably will at some point. Okay. okay. Uh, Robert is also a nocturnal creature, so we might be up for a little bit. But mm-hmm. I imagine, just saying, I imagine Hildy's probably hitting the bar as well. Of course. Yeah, I mean they—they're. It's the Firebelly's Guild Hall. I mean they're going to be drinking tonight. So There's, as the as apparently the only member of the party that has to sleep, I've got to drink first. It's <laughs> fair. You're uh, just we're gonna just... have to wait for me at some point. I think she has to meditate for I don't know how long, mm-hmm. and then I have to um, centuries rest at least for six hours. So right, yeah, I meditate right, so you have for four similar. hours. Four hours, and it's yeah. worth right. eight hours of sleep. Yeah, yep. yeah. Azalea, where do you go? That's a really great question. I actually think she's gonna wander back to the grove. Okay. Yeah. Uh, It'll be an outside space, which is where she's way more comfortable anyway. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, barkeepers tend to get pretty antsy when you bring a gigantic rat into their <laughs> establishment and <laughs> the pet. So, the bar. True. Depending on yeah, depending on the bar too, they might want to eat it. Yeah, so we don't want to. We, we're gonna keep Robert on eight, and at least for as long as we can. Okay, so and, just to be clear, you're going back towards the uh, the old growth forest near the tree, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, cool. like I'm just like lying down, dissociating. <laughs> wow. Oh God. Like so real I life. Think, <laughs> yeah. So, so like what I was we, saying earlier. <laughs> We we can kind of fade back a little bit here and we see individually like each person. We take a moment to kind of see we see Patina there and she's um sitting down on a you know kind of uncomfortable looking chair. Perfectly comfortable herself, writing in a journal, correct? And we can kind of see that sort of like maybe like a little bit of like a candle just kind of slightly glowing in a mostly nondescript room, which is stacks and stacks of dated books, like all throughout it. Uh, we see Anna in her room, maybe in her meditative state. This, uh, I imagine there's a lot of colors in here uh, and yeah. light and so on, just kind of like filling the room. Um, but that's up to you. Yeah, it's like a little bazaar. Yeah. Of yep. Stuff she's stolen from the bazaar. Yeah, various trinkets and things kind of adorning all these uh, like shelves and like uh, kind of just sprawled throughout here in this sort of like central meditative area that uh, Anna is uh, taking a moment to gather her thoughts within. Uh, we see now Hildy. Hildy's um, sitting at a bar with a number of other members of the Firebelly Guild, uh, all sorts of just uh, just chaos behavior all surrounding her people slamming mugs of beer and dancing and singing and tavern music and the occasion there's like a fight that breaks out behind her as she's like chugging a beer herself and azalea um i think are you gonna set up like a hammock yeah i think we're going full feral child in the city park okay sleeping in a hammock yep so we it's like see bright neon lights like two feet to the left. <laughs> yeah. She's found a nice sort of like cozy section, uh, maybe like a little bit higher up just to be out of the view of everybody else. Uh, and you're you're laying in your hammock. Uh, uh, Robert has sort of nestled uh, amongst you somewhere and uh, kind of all around you. We see these little like white wisps, almost like uh, lantern flies sort of blinking in and out um, as you slowly fall asleep. Or whatever, maybe not sleep, but you you kind of see them up, uh, kind of floating up around and above you in the canopy of the trees. We can move on to the next day. Uh, everything, like I said, it was a nice, peaceful, calming night. Uh, sorry, one second. So yeah, a peaceful, calm night. Uh, you all, well, you can say, you can meet up at the the gate of uh, the port of Providence if you want, which is where everybody sort of uh, takes off on their expeditions. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Sorry, just checking something real quick. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so you, you find your way out to the Port of Providence, and uh, I don't think we've described it before, but um, you come across uh, what looks to be a large, bustling port. Uh, one of the things that's very clear as you're sort of coming up here um, is that instead of water, there are many airships sort of like floating around through here, um, and many of them seemingly... Uh, waiting in a queue, um, uh, sitting kind of centralized in the middle of this port is a circular like desk like section um, with this uh, oh, magical aura sort of permeating through it. And you can see a number of figures sort of like doing uh, uh, coming up and talking to people within it and moving away and then coming back up and talking to them. And then this like sort of magical energy sort of permeate from this section, shoot out towards one of the many sort of uh, docks throughout here and a gate sort of opening up, this uh, portal seemingly opening up in space. Sometimes people walk through them, 
Sometimes people travel via, via like a barge, like a floating barge. Um, there are much larger gates that appear occasionally and you can see these like massive sort of like exploration like ships airships kind of travel through seemingly soaking up the magical energy into their uh their sails before floating through the portal and then closing again um each and every time a portal opens everybody kind of feels like the the hair kind of stand up on their their arms almost like this magical electricity uh shooting through the area you also notice off to your right as you're coming up uh, a large sort of wall. There is a wall here um, that maybe at one point was a completely alabaster, but at this point it's just covered in various ribbons and offerings and things of that nature. Um, this wall is a guy of the wall of remembrance. It's it's set up to remember those that don't return back from their expeditions, and you can see many people kind of like offer. A, a sort of moment, uh, a peaceful moment, or a recognition to the wall before they move on as they're walking through here. Uh, as you, you four approach, you do notice uh, Eleanor sort of kind of like uh, waves at you. She's like, oh, hello, hello, you know, and guides you over to her. Um, she's at this like central desk area and is talking to uh, one of the operators, uh, people that sort of open up and understand how to open the portals into where and so on. Shit. You all, I'm assuming, just go up ahead and approach, yeah. right? Okay, so you make your you make your way up there, and uh, she's talking to them. She's like, "Yes, this, I need to go exactly here." And they, they kind of say, yeah, I understand that. We're not supposed to send anybody there, though, uh, after what happened last time. And she's what like, last time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's like, well, apparently the last time they sent a group of Pathfinders there, they didn't return. Maybe it's just like really nice there and they didn't want to come back. Yeah, yeah I like that idea. Yeah, how do you know? Well, they said, um, they did say that beforehand, be, the last time we sent somebody there, we actually did send a um, Pathfinder team to go and establish a foothold there, and that's when they didn't return. It was actually marked as habitable. When were they scheduled to return? Uh, it's been months. Maybe it's just taking longer than usual. We haven't heard from them. So they say yeah, it's possible. However, very unlikely. This guy's a and downer. they say they kind of like they point and they there's you can get a better look at it now. There's actually an orb kind of sitting in the middle of like a magical pool of energy just behind them and they kind of go up this person walks up and you can see they they make a quick hand gesture and they say a magical word and the orb sort of expands out to this almost like image of uh it looks like a galaxy in a way like all these various stars and things and he says and he points and he says this is the place that you want to go and he kind of like expands and he points at it and he ga grasps onto it and like pulls it towards himself and it expands it gets larger and he says, this is where we sent them. And at the time, and he kind of waves his hand to the left. At the time, it looked like this. And you see this like really bright green glow from this like star, right? This like, sort of like twinkling star. And he says now, and he fans back over it. It looks like this. And it's gone all dull and has this sort of like shadow blackness sort of permeating through it. Is it me, or do you guys, like, really want to go now? Oh, yeah. Do you have any idea what happened there? They say, anytime we send somebody to a star that has changed like this, they do not return. All right, hear me out. I'm having reservations. Come there with you. What happens when you send someone after the stars changed? They don't they come return. Back fine, right? 
we've never had anybody return. Hildy, Hildy says, all right, um, huddle up, huddle up. She's like, come here, come here. She asks you all to huddle with her. Do you all go over? Yes. <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah. She says, okay, so here's the thing. You know how you went to that other place and I was able to bring you back eventually? Mm-hmm. She's like, sure. I'm pretty sure I could do that again. All right, we're going to need a little bit more than yeah. pretty sure. She's like, oh, no, well, um. Percentage. She says, oh, 95% sure. That's pretty that's, good. That's, yeah. That's better yeah, than yeah, I was yeah. expecting. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, She says, well, I think there's a link. She's like, I can create a link as long as I know where you were, where you're going. So wait, didn't we have a coin last time? She says, yes, but I've done something. The coin is a little, eh, it's not the greatest conduit for magical energies. And she yeah, says, no, I've no. got this this time. And she kind of pulls out a, um, it's a, it kind of looks like a charm made out of like various metals that sort of melded together. Um, it has a swirl sort of like structure in the middle of it. It's long and rectangular. It seems like, Almost like a multi-pass in a way, <laughs> if you will. But it's 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 about oh about six inches tall, about two inches wide, and it has this like sort of metal inlaid through it and this little like permeation of energy. Writing it down. An inlay mm -hmm. with a permutation. Per permeating, like pulsing um, magical energy. And she says thing. It, it'll only last a short while. However, we're pretty much wherever you are, as far as I know. As long as you break this, it'll open up a brief portal that you could go through and return home. Okay, so How long of a short while? Uh, she says uh, seconds. So you all would have to be quick getting going through. Wait, hold on. I'm so sorry. So I go over there. How long does it, like... Like it'll like this will last forever, and then when I pop it open, it's only a few seconds to get back. She says seconds, as in um, a less than a minute, more than twenty seconds. I think the question we're asking is, if we leave here with this item, mm -hmm. does it have a a half life of how long it'll it'll? Yes. Stay oh connected no. To you? No. Ah no. Okay. Well, I like it. That's fine. Yeah. Coin for sure. She says, um, though the materials I need to make it are, are fairly rare and I'm having a hard time finding more and then dealing with those damnable mining dwarves. And she points at you, Hildy, you know. And uh, she says, dealing with them and trying to get the materials I need has been a bit difficult. So um, this is kind of the only one I have right now. But as you're out, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find more and make more. What are the materials you need? She says, maybe, I maybe need uh, specifically a uh, magically charged platinum. Yeah, and unfortunately, the only ones that know are the, the uh, mining dwarves. Why am I drawing a blank on what they're called? A name for them. Oh, I can't that's look it my, up. That's not my family, right? Or somebody no. else. No, you're part of the fire bellies. You're the ones that got expelled. Yeah. But yeah, they, she says, yeah, those, those damn dwarves. Um, she says they just charge so much and then they won't let us know where anything is. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to get more, but then they don't want to deal with me because they don't like me. And uh, yeah, I'm doing my best. However, if for some reason you were to find, you know, a cache or a uh, ley line of magically charged platinum uh that would be very helpful go through the portal there's like a get cash now like little mm -hmm. vendor <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah how many people can go through the portal she says as many that could walk through in the time that you have okay okay that's good yep it also means though if we're being like chased something could follow us through that is possible yeah. yes yep, yep, yep. keep that in mind well, yes. I think as a DM, I'm going to retroactively say something. Okay. She's going to change it. She's going to say, 
However, if a person walks through with the broken charm, it'll close as soon as they get to the other side. Uh, ah, good. Okay. All right. Because that seals the link. So whoever breaks gotcha. it, it should be the last one through. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Or you could just leave it on the other side and leave it open as long as it stays open for, oh, you know true. what I mean? It doesn't yeah. have to be on a person. You could just leave it. Gotcha. You could break it, drop it, run through if you wanted. You know what I mean? You know, be, yeah. You know, However, like to break it and be the first one through and be like, oh, <laughs> just run through with it. Like, ha bye bye. Oh my God. <laughs> my evil character's coming out. <gasps> okay, cool. So that's, I mean, that seems like a reasonable way to get home. So it's it's probably worth the risk. I kind of look at everyone else like, eh. and I suppose someday this will be standard issue for the Pathfinders. If I could get materials permitting, right? Damn doors. She says otherwise. Um, as long as we can convince them to open a portal for you to come back. There will be a portal opened every 24 hours on the dot after you leave. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is how travel is normally done. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're exploring, then you kind of continue onwards. Typically, people that are exploring, exploring are on the ships, and the ships have uh, a magical mechanism that sort of opens up new portals and things like that. However, if a person goes and visits a place, there is a... Uh, period every day that they open up the portal for for you to go through if you need to. So. You know, I must be changing in my old age. Because <laughs> yesterday I thought, don't send me on an adventure. Please, please don't. But nothing is really inspiring as a good mystery. Just fascinating. And now I... I really want to go. I'm really interested to see what's going on here. So, eh. after many years, I guess I finally uh, found a star spark again. So I'm all gung ho. Nice. I'm, I'm always up for an adventure. I'm yeah, I'm right? good to go. Eleanor looks at you, Hildy. Yeah, I've got nothing better to do. Let's go, Azalea. Azalea's gonna kind of prod at her little shoulder and see if Robert is up enough. He kind of like, he kind of like nestles on your shoulder, kind of nudges you. All right, let's go. We're going on an adventure, Charlie. Anyway, <laughs> so <clears throat> yeah, and uh, Eleanor says, "Okie dokie." Uh, who wants sir. To hold the card? Oh yeah, that's right. She's like, mm, who? Uh, she instinctively hands it to Patina because she I knows you the best. Oh, <laughs> so you're you're reaching out and she's gonna give it to you, Patina, and you're like, nope, mine. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Love okay. it. It's too much responsibility. Excellent. Okay. I'm afraid if I sit on it, it's gonna crack. And you know. okay, I lick the last thing. I don't want this one. <laughs> nah. This one doesn't want saliva all over it. So Eleanor walks up and she says, it is very important that you open up the portal like I asked you to. She says, I will take full responsibility for anything that happens. And they kind of look at her and they kind of look at all of you. And they look back and they say, if it was anybody else, you know I would say no. And they kind of open it up and there's a little in that greenish sort of shadowy energy sort of dissipates from the star in this like constellation here uh dips down into the pool of like this magical energy below and you can see this energy this like white energy sort of shoot out from it and follow these like almost like roots emanating from the uh the central area and kind of shoot off to the side and out on like a little tiny dock that's obviously made for people to walk through and kind of opens up there's this milky sort of light um, portal that opens up in space, flat. Uh, and uh, he says, there you go. He says, 24 hours from now, I'll open it again. 
should you not be there, I'll do it again, but only for a certain number of days. I give it a week. We'll open it up. It'll be open up, open for 10 minutes every day. How many days are in a week? Seven. We're just going to go away hour times. Yeah. Perfect. And then we have the charm as like worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. Foster and get out. I may be a little bit, well, weeks and passage of time, not necessarily passage of time, but weeks and, you know, what a day is where you go might be longer and so on, but it won't affect, he's saying seven, seven days from his time. Gotcha. So you'll have to kind of figure that all out. Does anybody have a watch? Like a, like a wrist watch? I like would a- say there are watches. There are things that keep time. Yeah. Um, so if anybody wants to have one, you could have a pocket watch. Somebody can say I have a pocket watch. Somebody can say I have I have my own watch. Things like that. So I would Dude. imagine Anna might have one because of her collecting trinkets and so on. I don't. I, I, I might maybe I, I do, wanted... but I don't know what it is. You don't know what it is. That's fair. Navigation tools. Okay. We could say that you myself. have a watch. Yeah. Okay. You might so have I an think... internal watch. Yeah, I know. I want. Nice. I was gonna add yeah. to that. I want to yeah. be able to like flip a little compartment open. and oh, yeah. Know what time it is. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. So you'll definitely have that. I have to put in a few more years with the guild before I've got my watch, but soon, very soon. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would say that it's cool not watch of your retirement. Yeah, it's like a five-year <laughs> g- gift. Yeah. 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 Like MLM. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only the bronze level, you guys. Yeah, sorry, I'm not always <laughs> to go. Platinum tier yet. You got a you got a while to go yet. Yeah. Um, I will say that it's probably not super common for watches to be yeah. a thing, but as long as you know, I would totally say that they are around and people use okay. them. Right there's probably there's probably a clock tower in Desh. So um, right as we go through, I'm going to take a note of the time and just know no matter where we're going, 24 hours later, we mm-hmm. need to be back here yep. if we. Can if it's convenient for us yep. and then we'll we'll try to keep um keep track of the time just to keep things simple it's a 24-hour day mm. everything like that right okay. and it would probably use military time so okay. rather than noon to noon noon to midnight and so on it would gotcha. be just the full 24 hours so we'll say it's 1 15 <laughs> well that's dumb just call it one <laughs> We're going to call it one fifteen. We'll just call it 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock every day. 0100 every day. It opens up 10 minutes and closes. On dash standard time. Dash mm-hmm. standard time. <laughs> <laughs> one o'clock right. dot every day for mm-hmm. seven days. Mm-hmm. Dash light savings. <laughs> dash light savings. Yep. Dash savings time. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you roll already, you can, you can wander over. I will say that you've prepared a little bit. Um, you have some rations and things of that nature on your, uh, at your ready. I'm not going to make you go through like the shopping period and so on. Um, we're going to say that you kind of went out and you gathered some materials and stuff and things you thought you might need and are on your way out. If something comes up and you're like, we probably would have had that. Let's discuss it. And then we can go from there. Okay, Mm -hmm. but most likely if it's something simple like rope, like a basic explorer pack, right? But then you're like, no, I totally brought a bag of ball bearings with me. I'm like, okay, that's why I wanted to address the watch before we went through the portal. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. buy a watch real fast. So yeah, new batteries and a flashlight. Yeah. All right, so you can you can make your way through. Um, who's going through first? I will. Okay. And I think I will just kind of the tank is going to go through. <laughs> yep. So Hildy, you you travel through and seemingly disappear in the portal. Um, it's it's interesting how this happens because it's almost instantaneous for you, but there's a moment where you sort of exist in between the two portals, and there's a sec like just a second where you can see just like a a cacophony of just like energies and color just slamming into each other and exploding and creating new life and energy before you're on to the other side and you step through and it's instantly noticeable to you uh, just how humid this place is. Um, It has a sort of wetness to it. And 
you you step through and you notice what is very obviously a sort of robust and ancient overgrown jungle in front of you. The others sort of bloop, 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 kind of plop through as well onto the other side. Go ahead. Before I go through, like right before I step through, I'm going to mm-hmm. take my um, my glass star that I have and I'm going to kiss it and I'm just going to whisper to myself. I know you'll find me if I'm ever lost. Keep an eye out for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to keep and I'm going to walk through. Okay. Just like a kind of like a quick prayer. Like, oh, yeah, I know you got my back. Nice. So you're the last we'll say you're the last one through. Uh, yeah. And you're kind of uh, everybody you, you come to on the other side and you notice sort of surrounding you, like I said, this sort of ancient overgrowth, like jungle. Um, one of the first things you it's very obvious to you that sort of flies away almost instantly is a number of very uh, colorful, like red and green uh, parrots that sort of sp- fly up into the sky or up into the air and are startled by you and sort of rawr, 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 and fly away. You hear a very, fam- like not familiar, but uh, a, a number of these like sort of jungle sounds, uh, bugs and insects and cacophony of noises all surrounding you. Um, this area around where the portal opens um, has been cleared a little bit. And you see the, what looks like the remnants of a like base camp uh, surrounding you. As we sort of maybe pull back from this image is all four of you sort of bloop, 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 out of the uh, the portal here. We can see, like I said, the base camp sort of area sort of stamped out in the jungle itself. Uh, a number of sort of overturned uh, tents and things. Uh, a fire that is almost overgrown that obviously hasn't been used in a long time. A little fire pit. Um, numerous sort of uh, uh, little huts and things of that nature, like basically makeshift sections of... Um, uh camp there's also an overtone overtoned overturned cart um and i actually want all of you as you're kind of taking this all in to make a perception check uh oh use this over here okay okay uh 15 15 plus 3 Ooh, net 20. It's going to be a 21 for me. Well done, well done. 10. Um, Everybody that got a 15 or higher, you will notice, you kind of hear something. The the bottom of the the wagon that's been overturned here uh, is kind of facing you. It, it would definitely be something that was, it's like a horse-drawn carriage of some sort, similar sort of concept. Um, and it's definitely been overturned. The bottom of it's facing you. It has two wheels on it. Uh, there's a bit of like a struggling sort of noise on the opposite side of it. You can't see quite what's there from here. Hmm. Guidance on myself. Okay. So you cast guidance on yourself. Mm. There's like a rustling. Something seems to be, I don't know. Maybe like you hear something kind of fall over for a moment. Uh, there's like a almost like a metal noise for like one second. Zelia is going to pull her short swords. All right, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to try and flush it out. If it jumps from my face, please save me. If it okay. runs for you, try to stop it. Okay. Okay. Hildy will take out her great axe and stand on the other side in case it goes the other direction. Okay. As as um Azalea is walking away, I'm gonna switch it and I'm gonna cast guidance on her right as she's turning away. Okay. <laughs> you got the guidance going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So you you start to wander around the other. Are you gonna try and sneak up? Azalea? Yeah, we may as well. I think that's probably a good idea. All right. Go ahead and make a stealth check for me. Oh. And what's the guidance? Is that a plus four? Plus D4. It's a D4 on one ability check of its choice. Got it. Okay, well, I don't really need it because I got a dirty 20. 
But okay. Okay. We'll, we'll yeah. save that guidance for later. Yep. It lasts for like minute. a minute. So yeah, it's a, okay. you'll have I time. I imagine this will happen fast. So. Mm-hmm. so you you sneak up and you go around the corner. Let's see here. All right. You're rolling good tonight. Dang. Mm-hmm. And you make your way around and you can see it, it doesn't seem to notice you, but there there is a dog here. Um, it looks a bit odd to you. And there's a moment that you you swear that the dog sort of fades out of existence for a second, but doesn't seem to go anywhere. And it's struggling against what seems to be a chain around its left ankle. Kind of gnawing at the chain and you can see it's sort of trying to like scrape itself away. And you can see that it's kind of like dug into the ground here. Um, there is a uh, like uh, boxes and things like that sort of that have seemed to be have knocked over and so on. Um, it seems to be struggling against this, trying to get away. Does this dog? Okay, is... Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I mean, is this dog similar to the one that was in um, the like uh, whisper way? From where you are, Anna, you can't see it. Okay. But maybe. <laughs> but yeah, that's what you're presented with, Azalea. Okay, I'm going to put one of my short swords away. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to stay far enough away that I'm not approaching it uh-huh. in a, a threatening sort of manner. But I am going to like kind of click at it to get its attention. Okay. One, one of my hands is just up, like... Well, it starts growling at you. It's all right. I can help you, you know. Go ahead and make an animal handling roll. I think this is where I'm going to use the guidance since we're going to have to use it anyway. Yeah. D4. Uh, that's, oh, God. 24? 24. 24. Nice. Yeah, that's really good. So the the dog here uh, instantly sort of, uh, like, shrinks down and back, but seems to be, like, sort of complacent with whatever you want to do with it, honestly. Like, you get a sense that, um, that you, um... Yeah, you can do whatever you need to do. Okay, I'm going to wait for this car to go away. Yeah, you're I live on a really busy <laughs> street. Sorry. 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 They've been going like crazy night. Um, okay, so I'm going to go for the chain to try and free it. Okay, yeah. Um, the chain, it's a fairly simple thing. You're, you're sh- pretty certain you can break it, but you might need... <sighs> But in order to, like, get the actual, like, cuff off, you might have to, like, pick the lock. Okay. I think we're just going to settle for getting the chain, like, f- at least free so the dog can go wherever it needs to go. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Uh, go ahead and make... You know, honestly, like, the chain really isn't that hard. The dog is fairly small. Um, you get a sense that it's probably, like, an adolescent, right? It's not very old. It's It's... It seems maybe like it's been here for a little bit too long, like a a while. So maybe it doesn't have quite the strength it had before. So you can kind of get in there. You break that chain and it kind of like hops away from you for a moment and then looks back at you. What's going on? Are you okay? I think at this point, it kind of hops to the side and everybody can kind of see the dog. It's kind of pulling its leg up, you know, where the chain was and kind of holding it like... You know how dogs do when they're maybe like hurt a little, so they don't want to put any weight on it. You know. Okay. Hot and Anna, Anna, you can totally see this looks very similar okay. to that kind of dog. Yeah. Oh, I wonder. No, I'll go to the puppy. Get the puppy. Yeah, I'll go over to the dog. I wonder if that chain was there to prevent it from like phasing in and out, because that other dog seem to zip around as if it passed through planes to get like it moved around you guys remember the dog we saw when we went and saw tabitha it would like zip zap around it would just like show up Mm -hmm. 
almost like it teleports, right? Yeah, it's almost like it teleports, which makes me think that maybe it's teleporting because it's like passing between planes to like whoop to teleport, and that chain was on there to prevent it from doing so. Plane pupper. Plane. No, no, I plane wasn't pupper. about to just leave it here. It's hungry. It's starving. Are you any can... of us good at detecting magic? Or is that something anyone can do? Hmm. Arcana? What is that? Um, oh, I guess an Arcana check. I can, I can do an Arcana check. Never mind. I'm good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I was like, someone has to be good at that. I'm uh, guessing. Can, I don't know. DM, yeah. is it Arcana? Would it be Arcana? Yeah. Go but ahead like and make in, an Arcana check. Okay. I have the spell detect magic and I can do it as a ritual. Okay. I'll I'll see if I can do an Arcana check on it first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I would like to cast uh, uh, pull jerky from my backpack and give it to dog. Yeah. Okay. So we've got like the the jerky being offered. Uh, what'd you get for your arcana check? Fourteen. Though you don't know if the chain is magical. Mm -hmm. You have heard about iron, which this chain seems to be made of, mm -hmm. interfering with certain magical effects and so on. Oh, okay. So it could be possible that they're holding, using that as a way to keep the the blink dog, which you know that it is, uh, in place. Interesting. And if until the see. iron is removed, it may not be able to teleport. But why would someone keep it from being able to teleport around? Like, what would be the point of keeping it here? Hmm. I wonder. Hmm. Not mm -hmm. malnourished. Uh, a little bit, yeah. So it's been a while since people have been here. Although, Azalea, um, you do notice from your particular point of view where you are, it does, you do notice some like bones and things like that have been maybe left here for it. And it seems to have picked them kind of clean. So something okay. has been feeding it. At some point, someone was feeding it, though I, I couldn't tell you exactly when that happened are there any are you, track you, marks you, that's not my forte but if there's any footprints or animal track marks around yeah Zelia, you want to make a survival check i yeah. i do badly mm -hmm. you should do it good actually i'm sorry it was a dad joke apologies oh, oh no oh no did we jinx <laughs> it well, it's a 10 so not 10's great. not bad you notice larger dog-like footprints kind of spattered throughout the area. Okay. All right, this could be a den. Perhaps. There are larger dog prints. But another dog wouldn't chain this dog up, so I'm reasonably certain that it was people. Hmm. I wonder if this was their den and then the previous Pathfinders, maybe they came into contact with these dogs? Possibly. Do we have an understanding, and I'm saying this to the group, how long do you think it's been since people were here? Can you guys tell? And I'm going to start like lifting things and like kind of looking at anything that's like remnants left behind. Like, yeah, I mean, just or... it's definitely been a while. Okay. Um, even the overturned cart has some overgrowth kind of going over it. Okay. It doesn't seem like it's fresh. Hmm. So this dog may have been here for a while. I'm going to try to approach the dog and, like, put my hand out. It sort of growls at you. It's very obviously not a... Domesticated? Domesticated dog, yes. I'm going to reach into my pack mm -hmm. and pull out a little bit of that brain matter that I bought. <laughs> yeah, so it's sniffing at Hildy. It's sniffing at your jerky and, like... Mm -hmm. Like kind of like I want it, but as soon as Anna, Anna pulls something out of her body, out of her pack, and I think everybody can kind of smell it for a second, and it's just like that dog's just like, 
what the hell is that? You know, and it kind of like starts almost like trotting over to you, Anna. I'm going to crouch down and offer it to the dog. Yeah, so you, you put your your hand out um, and it, it and just like takes it and munches it down. Can I pet the dog, you know? Uh, yeah, you, you can pet for a moment before it kind of like, okay. and like kind of trots off away from you. You do. He's soft, but is the dog looking to leave or do anything? Uh, it seemed to just kind of be taking purchase of what was going on, and then there was like an offer of food, so it stayed around for a minute. But like you can see that it's kind of starting to head towards the 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 tree line now, and kind of like looking back at you. Well, I'm gonna suggest we follow it. I think it wants us to follow. I agree. Let's follow the dog. So as you start to make like a couple steps toward it, it kind of like shrinks down, like mm-hmm. scared for a second, and then just darts off into the woods as fast as I can. Don't think it wanted us to follow it. Damn it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> can I take the iron chain? Yeah, what's left of it, yeah. Yeah, just a couple links of iron chain. Yeah, yeah. You can uh you could pull it off. It was probably about a 15 foot link of iron chain. You could you can kind of remove it. It seems to be attached to like the axle. On the opposite side. Gotcha. So you can literally just go up and kind of like unhinge it. I'll take it. Yeah. So you have a 15 feet of iron chain if you want it. I'll take it. I can carry that shit. It's all good. Yeah. So um, we're going to be ending it here in just a minute. So this is what we see now is like we can kind of see you all kind of hanging out. And we see the dog kind of run off. Hildy's taking off the the chain. And we're getting this view seemingly from the eyes of something else in the forest. And then as we see, like, the view, we can see Hildy removing the chain. We can see it kind of, like, through some of the, the tree line. And then we see off to the side, we get another view. Something else is watching what Patina is doing through the woods. And something else oh. is watching what Azalea is doing. And something else is watching what Enna is doing. And something else is watching what Patina is doing. And something else is watching. And we kind of get all these different views of all of you sort of just doing what you're doing, seemingly unaware of what's in the forest. And we kind of, we can see your figures all from like a a top-down view. And we kind of just fade back in a way. And we get uh, this like almost seemingly endless looking uh, old jungle-like forest uh, surrounding you all, kind of making it seem just how minuscule you all are here. Oh, gosh. And I think that's where we're going to call it. Ooh. Love it. Oh, good. <laughs> we're back. Yay. We're back, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> second Thursday of every month, starting at 730. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that was fun. I'm glad we're back. Mm-hmm. Me too. Yeah. Yes. And we get to play some more Mist Walkers because it's fun. It is fun. Um, yeah. yeah, that's going to be it for today. We'll do our little outros with everybody uh, since Hildy didn't get hers. Why don't we start there? Sure. Hi. Um, are you, who are you and what do you do? Um, you can find me on on Twitter at Loomis Harridan or on Instagram at Loomis Harridan Cosplay. Um, and that's kind of all I do. Um, that's fair. Neat. That's not all you do. You do a lot of things. That's all I can be in the army. So no, no. <laughs> <laughs> come, come watch me um, try and make an Andrus cosplay like 10 years after Dragon Age 2 came out. It's a good time. Ooh, nice. <laughs> uh, possum. Ah, yeah, I'm Possum. I'm a spooky horror streamer on here on Twitch, and I also cosplay, and you can find me on everything at Awesome La Possum. And that's basically it. I'm playing a lot of indie horror games at the moment, and they're going to be really, really fun to play. And I'm excited about it. Very exciting. Mm. Uh, Victoria. Victoria, I'm all things D&D grandma. Um, I... You can find our family on Twitter. That's mainly where we are. And I have my Instagram, which is Tories, T-O-R-I-E-S, period, table. And I just post everything D&D related. Nice. 
Cassie. <laughs> All right, so I'm Cassie. I am the game mistress for the Lovely Craftians podcast, and you can find me on Twitter at lovelygm underscore Cassie, or uh, I also run the Lovely Craftians Twitter. We also play games on Twitch sometimes. Not, I won't promise a regularity <clears throat> with that or what we play, but usually it's Phasma or something spooky that we can scare each other with. Nice. So that's fun. We're, Gosh. Lovely Craftians are wherever your favorite podcatcher is. Nice. Same thing with D and D Grandma, except for Spotify. I'm sorry. Yes, everything except for Spotify. But uh, yes, and then for our family game, we my my mother in law had to take a little bit of time off, and uh, we started a couple little like one shots. And I do a one shot where like it's kind of like an Elseworlds, and I DM it with everyone, and it's just kind of like a a weird like Paylor kidnapped you and now you're fighting vampires randomly so it's just like a little one-off if you just want to see what our family is about that's about it nice uh and then there's there's me uh i'm orson fells i have my own twitch orson underscore fells and um yeah i'm gonna play some horror games starting tomorrow we were playing black book black book is really cool by the way oh cool i don't know if you've heard of this it's like a it's like a deck builder um, but you play as Vasilia, a, a woman that becomes a witch, and it's all based on uh Russian folklore, and you learn a lot about Russian folklore and stuff. Ooh, and it basically you solve problems and you take on like demons as your 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 familiars and you send them out to do stuff for you. But it's also like a deck builder, and it's like got like this really cool low poly thing and a really interesting story and stuff. I kind of re- I highly recommend it. I think it's like 20 bucks on steam so it's not super expensive very cool um another cool like indie ish game as well we do a lot of indie games too so but yeah highly recommend it it's really cool uh other than that thanks everybody for hanging out tonight we really do appreciate you all it's really nice to be back again uh i want to thank all my you know players you guys are you folks are all awesome and um we'll be back on Mm -hmm. let me see here let me get the date real quick the oh, yeah. Tell me now. 13th of November? The 11th. Is it second the 11th, Thursday? It's the, yeah, 11th. the 11th. Oh, Thursday. I'm sorry. That was Saturday. The 11th. The, yeah. The 11th of November. Is that Thanksgiving? No. That's Remembrance Day mm-hmm. here. It's Remembrance Day. Thanksgiving okay. is until the 25th. Always, always okay. remember the... 11th of November? No. Okay. Remember, remember the 5th of November. 5th of November. <laughs> the gunpowder treason and plot. There's a lot in November you need to remember. <laughs> that yeah. threw me off because yeah. I was like, yeah. we just had Thanksgiving. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> our, our Canadian. <laughs> American Thanksgiving. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yes. It's oh, all right. it. my birthday. It's like half my family's birthday. And oh. Thanksgiving. And yes, everybody. Also, I'm moving. So who yeah. knows what's going to happen next month? I'm probably going to be in a hotel. Because oh, wow. I'm going to sell and buy yeah. and adapt. Yeah, there is a gap. Yeah. It's it's annoying. Yeah. Gap, yeah. But yeah. once again, thanks everybody. You all are amazing. Uh we'll be back, like I said, on whatever date that was that we said, because I can't remember it off the top November of my head. 11th. November eleventh. November eleventh. And um yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks for every every thanks for everybody. Thanks everybody for hanging out and uh bye-bye. Bye. See you next time. Outro.